Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday afternoon, September 8th. We continue to track three hurricanes, all of them Category 3 or stronger, and all of them threats to land here. Truly historic day and a dangerous one for many. We'll briefly mention Hurricane Katia in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, quickly approaching the Mexican state of Veracruz now, moving west-southwest, should come on shore later tonight. The eye has become better defined, as you can see on visible satellite imagery today, and the hurricane is now Category 3 intensity, so very, very heavy winds could affect a small segment of the coastline near the landfall point, the hurricane will quickly decay inland, and then heavy rain, the potential for flash flooding in the mountains and mudslides is a distinct possibility with any tropical system that makes landfall in Mexico. This will make landfall sometime later tonight. We're also watching Hurricane Jose continuing to approach the leeward islands, and this has become very, very strong today. Uh, the eye is cleared out. This looks just about as strong as you can get. Winds of 150 miles per hour. The system is about as healthy as it could possibly be, and we're continuing to watch it track west-northwest and could come very, very close here to Barbuda. Unfortunately, the same island that received a direct hit from Irma only days ago. As far as I know, many people have already been taken off the island, uh, so hopefully everyone is already gone. Uh, but sadly, more destruction coming potentially from a hurricane that will be close enough to provide at least uh, perhaps hurricane force winds, and if the Iowa comes over, even stronger winds than that. Uh, we'll hope for a miss just to the north, but adverse conditions could extend throughout the leewards here. At least tropical storm force conditions could extend throughout Antigua and the surrounding islands. So we'll keep a close eye on this and hope it passes more north over the next couple of days. This is coming in quite fast now, and all preparations should be rushed to completion at this point. And here's the big one, Hurricane Irma continuing to move west-northwest, lumbering its way towards South Florida. And this is indeed the correct word, lumbering, because the system has become gigantic. This is a large hurricane. You can see how large the area of dangerous weather is that is approaching uh, Cuba and South Florida. This is a dangerous situation for a large area. And we're going to talk more about the track in a second. First, let's look at how uh, the storm has been evolving. We can see that the eye has undergone some changes. You can see some raggedness in there. That's because there's a remnant of the inner eye wall still left over from this eye wall replacement cycle that began yesterday and is now trying to complete. And we can see on radar actually that it for all intents and purposes, has completed. The outer eye wall is here, and this is now the only eye wall evident on the radar. There was a little fragment rotating around in the middle left of the inner eye wall earlier this morning, but we now see a closed and very healthy looking new eye wall that is a little larger than the old one. On satellite, you'll still see some ragged appearances as cloud fragments from the leftover eye wall inside continue to rotate around. And uh, make no mistake, this remains a very powerful hurricane. Uh, again, eyewall replacement cycles usually cause the maximum winds to decrease a little bit, but they also cause the wind field to spread out at the same time. And so the hurricane actually becomes more dangerous because it can push more water and bring stronger winds for a longer period of time over a larger area. And the winds haven't really fallen off all that much in Irma. They're still at 155 miles per hour as this remains an upper end category 4 hurricane. And again, when these eyewall replacement cycles complete, you can actually have the winds come back up to a little closer to where they were before the cycle began. So we could even see the winds come up a little bit more prior to landfall. But a lot of that depends now on how closely Irma interacts with the landmass of Cuba. We've seen it move sufficiently far to the south today that it's going to be very close to clipping portions of the North Cuban coastline. And some models now do bring this directly over the island for a period of time. If the eye is to track on shore at all in Cuba, it would induce some weakening of Irma's maximum winds. But it's important that folks realize that that weakening would likely not be dramatic because the time spent over Cuba would be limited, and even if some weakening were to occur, this would remain a dangerous hurricane in terms of wind potential, and the other threats, such as storm surge and heavy rainfall, would remain identical to before, really. So even if Cuba weakens the hurricane a little bit, don't take your guard down. We'll be watching for it. It could be some good news in terms of the maximum wind damage that could occur in South Florida near the landfall point, but don't count on that. This is going to be dangerous no matter what. Uh, we have the recon flight in there again showing the pressure still under 930 millibars extremely deep. This is a very large and powerful hurricane with a lot of air moving around it and you can see all the purple barbs here. This is all hurricane force wind field within uh, what the plane was measuring today. So you can see how large this is. Again here's the track west-northwest and you can see the coast of Cuba here lingering 
and uh, this is getting close now and you can see that clearly Cuba is getting raked by very dangerous weather in its own right and this eye wall seems pretty likely to get very close to the coast here at some point and whether or not the eye comes ashore we will have to see it's going to be really close we'll be watching it this is sort of, sort of a wait and see thing now uh, you're not going to be able to tell whether the hurricane's going to drift 10 miles this way 10 miles that way we're going to be watching it but we have the general idea now and there's still a couple of things left to be ironed out like this interaction with Cuba but a lot of things are coming into focus as we look at the current hurricane forecast track we are now up to the event folks we're talking about Saturday evening the storm is going to be just south of the Keys starting to bring hurricane force winds toward the Florida Keys in South Florida adverse weather could begin as soon as tomorrow morning Saturday morning in parts of Florida is the tropical storm force wind field you can see it here in orange if you look closely at the figure there's the hurricane here's how far out the dangerous wind field extends that means the edge of this is going to reach Florida well before the eye this is a large system adverse conditions begin early so make sure that if you need to leave, you have already if you're in an evacuation zone due to storm surge. And make sure you have your preparations completed tonight. Do not be trying to complete any preparations tomorrow because dangerous weather will already be moving in. You can see the hurricane warnings and watches up and down the Florida Keys and the Florida Peninsula. And these could even be extended north with time depending on how strong the system remains as it moves north. You'll note that the track has shifted slightly left here. It shows that close encounter with the Cuban coastline, and now it's coming more into the southwestern portion of South Florida as opposed to the Miami area. Uh, now, this has been shifting a little bit left with time, and some of the most recent model data today suggests that the ridge to the north of the system is a little bit stronger than was anticipated by the models. So this ridge here just to the north of this hurricane. This is valid for tomorrow morning. You can see it near the Cuban coast and this ridge is just a little bit stronger it appears now than it was forecast to be. And so it's nudging the hurricane a little bit farther south toward Cuba and then a little bit farther west as it comes up near Florida. And so this shifted the track a little bit to the west and you know some wobbles are expected here as the system nears landfall nailing down the exact landfall point you know a little there could be some changes here and there but remember how big this system is and very severe impacts are likely to occur throughout the Florida Peninsula that said since the eye is where the worst winds are as far as wind damage goes and potentially the worst storm surge uh, it could be some good news for Miami that this is shifting west here the track over Biscayne Bay would be worse than the track that is now portrayed and it could even shift a little bit farther west here closer to the west coast of Florida so this could be some good news for southeast Florida but the surge threat will still be severe due to the large fetch of southeast flow that will be coming into the coastline regardless of exactly where the eye is and surge will continue to be a threat all the way up the Florida coastline and potentially even into Georgia as the system moves up the peninsula and brings east flow into the coast on its uh, right hand side the other consequence of this slight shift in the track to the left is that there is a greater threat for wind damage and potentially surge on the western coast of Florida. So remember, like we've been talking about, this little wiggle left or right that could occur uh, over the Florida Peninsula can determine who gets the worst wind damage. And since we're seeing this little shift now, uh, folks in western, on the western coast of Florida, places like Naples, Fort Myers, Tampa, you guys need to be ready for this. You could potentially now get the core of the hurricane as this is now shifted a little bit left so be prepared for that uh, as this comes through the keys again storm surge on the back side from the north storm surge on the front end from the south and we could get surge up into these bays on the west side you can see all the storm surge inundation forecasts at the uh, hurricane center website hurricanes.gov you can zoom into your local area and see the potential inundation for your region and if you live in an evacuation zone that's prone to surge please heed the evacuation orders from your local officials and get out of there you do not want to be there if surge is forecasted to inundate your location as the system continues north it's a powerful hurricane and it's large so it could bring hurricane force winds quite far north up the state of florida and hurricane force gusts could even occur as far north as the florida georgia border and we'll have to see exactly what trajectory the system takes and how far inland over florida it is but we could see hurricane force gusts all the way into the panhandle of florida and we could see sustained winds that rival what was experienced in the tallahassee area during hurricane hermine of last year and those winds although they were only tropical storm force caused major major power outages across this part of the country so expect power to be lost 
for many people and for winds to become a problem here, especially since the track is shifting a little bit farther to the left with time, a hurricane centered up here in North Florida is, is a pretty bad for a substantial section of the panhandle of Florida. So this is going to be no joke up in that region. So do be careful and make sure you have your supplies prepared for this. This is why we prepare guys is because little shifts can happen within the cone of uncertainty and when they do that's why you got to be ready for it. Again places like Jacksonville will continue to get onshore flow during this whole time. Very strong winds on the eastern side will persist. That's going to be the strong side for some time. As the hurricane moves up into Georgia it becomes the north and west sides that become the strongest parts of the storm and at this point uh, winds will likely be reduced below hurricane force in this part of the country, but it doesn't take a lot to knock down trees and take out power once you get this far north, and tropical storm force winds are likely to persist for some time as it moves into Georgia and portions of Alabama, Tennessee, South and North Carolina could all get dangerous rainfall that could cause flooding inland. So be aware of those threats and stay tuned to your local National Weather Service forecast office for the details on that for your local area. That's it for now, guys. Uh, I'll likely have more updates. Um, probably not another one tonight, but certainly more tomorrow as we continue to track the very large Hurricane Irma as it approaches Cuba and Florida. Be safe, guys. Take care. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.